Good morning, folks. We're looking at space weather, a major weather event in China, pre-earthquake electromagnetic anomalies, and the star water concepts extending to new reaches of the solar system. Let's start with the last 24 hours on our star was another quiet day. There were a couple minor eruptions off the limb, not aimed at Earth, especially off the south incoming bottom left. But once again, the big sunspots on the north have remained quiet as solar flaring stays in C-class range. To see why they are so quiet, let's look at those spots and their magnetic complexity. You can see that the active region is fairly large and has a solid longitudinal expanse, but they have a reverse joy tilt, which means the leading umbra here is closer to the polar region than the rest. Normally, the high flaring sunspots have the leading sunspot closer to the equator. Now we can also see in the magnetic view that the only region with any mixing potential is in the center where the blue and red are closely interacting. But those sunspots are not well developed, they are small, and some of that magnetism is penumbral or surface regions without umbral development. We'll continue monitoring it today as the spots morph and continue their evolution. I'm sure many of you have heard about this, a nearly unthinkable drop in temperatures flash froze an entire flock of waterfowl. Folks, if you took every possible weather modification method in existence that can cool the atmosphere, it would amount to maybe 3% of what happened here. This was a day after tomorrow movie type rapid freeze. It's crazy that this exact thing was the subject of our video just a few days ago when even the Weather Channel straight up called out the ongoing situation as being like that movie. This may actually be one of the fastest rapid atmospheric freeze events ever recorded. Up next, we've got two studies once again fortifying the pre-earthquake total electron content anomalies in the atmosphere. So far, 99% of the significant earthquakes ever studied in this way have shown either electric or magnetic anomalies prior to the event. There are now several textbooks and over a thousand papers on the subject, two more for the pile here. Last but not least, the concept of star water and how there's water detected everywhere, including on several moons that have much more water than Earth does. Now we add two of the past Pluto dwarf planets of our solar system. They appear to have geothermal activity that causes water and ice action beneath the surface, kind of like Enceladus, but at the planet level and at the outer reach of the solar system. We greatly appreciate your support. We'll do this all again tomorrow right here but right now it's 5 15 a.m in the new valley of the sun eyes open no fear be safe everyone